I'm going to start from the, I'm going to read a lot here because I want to make a point. Okay, it's called Lewis Wetzel, the Indian hunter. Among the early settlers in the region of Wheeler and Wheeler was a family of the name of Wetzel, the head of whom was German origin. They took a solemn oath never to make peace with the Indians while they had strength to wield a tomahawk or slight, slight to draw a bead. It was estimated that the four brothers in the course of this long Indian war took near 100 scalps. Damn, white people, right? That's what you think. Remember, Lewis was their father. Lewis Wetzel was perhaps the most indefatigable Indian hunter in the frontier. Uh, during the wars, it is said that disguised as an Indian, disguised as an Indian, he killed, disguised as an Indian, he killed in the region of Upper Ohio alone 27 of the enemy. He was about five feet nine inches in height, very broad shoulders, and full breasted. His complexion was dark and swarthy, dark and swarthy. He would take an Indian scalp or lose his own before he went home. And you look into it more and more and you start making sense out of it. See this white woman, right? See this so-called black woman? Who's a servant? Now I'll look good to you why she looks up there. That's not a black woman or African descent. These people have been playing chess with us for a long time. But today they're getting exposed. This is from, uh, I believe, South Carolina Ma uh, Historical Magazine. It says, uh, many of the slaves in this country have previously been slaves. Others have been owners of slaves in Africa. Uh, if not, therefore seem to, to be unnatural for a Negro in America to hold his brethren. Right? That's, that's a lie. Let me read this. Free blacks uh, became slave owners early in history. Indeed, one of the first known legal sanctions of slavery, other than the punishment for crime, involved a black owner. A, in 1654, in 1654, in 1654, uh, Anthony Johnson and his wife Mary, in a court suit, gained the service of their black servant. Uh, so he sues these people, right? And apparently, slave owning for free Negroes was so common, and slave owning for free Negroes was so common in the period of Commonwealth as to pass unnoticed and without criticism by those who consciously recorded events of the time. This is from Negroes in Virginia. It says the most remarkable property right possessed by free Negroes with OES was the right to acquire, own, and alienate slaves meaning our people. Indeed, for more than 20 years from the time the free Negroes, you Africans, first appeared in the court, there was no legal restriction upon their rights to own indentured white servants. It's white servants. It's white servants. They did that too, because y'all ruled Europe. There were black slave owners in Boston as early as 1724, 1787, 1790, 48 Mar Maryland black owners possessed 143 slaves. Free black owners were as usual, were as a usual thing much more severe on their slaves than the white owners. So you so-called black man, this is what you did to our people? You claim that those Europeans are your people. The Negroes who own slaves, y'all need to read these books. Look, this is from South Carolina Historical Message. Free blacks were all slave owners for more than 200 years, than 200 years, than 200 years. Free blacks became slave owners early in our history. Indeed, one of the first known legal sanctions of slavery, other than the punishment of, for crime, involved a black owner, Anthony Johnson. Y'all saw that. 